This is a demonstration of the circuit within the Corsia. Okay? The guys will come with the box. Of course, we need to walk from there to here. It's not easy. And then the first step will be to weigh the sample. When they weigh it, here at the front, I have the number of the box, the number of the pole, and the interval. I will tell that to my geographer, who is taking this note. So it will be box one from zero to four, it weighs 10 kilograms, okay? Now, why are we weighting the core boxes? Because if the sample is mineralized, it will weigh more. So even by just this simple step of weighting the core, we'll have an idea if we have or not mineralization. With time, when we're going to be doing this for some time, we will already know that a normal box will weigh, let's say, four to 4.5 kilograms. So if it weighs more or less than that, these guys will have a sticker, a red sticker, and they put the red sticker here on this corner. So when the geologists will start doing the logging, they will know that this box is heavy or yellow if it is light. Okay. So that way we will have this information. That is why it's so important to weigh the sample. Then we pick up the box and we put it here with the number to work. No, no, no. The number to work here. So. The next step is to do the RQD, which is the rock qualified uh, definition, which we cannot do because this is just plastic. But uh, as I mentioned, there are plenty of videos in YouTube that you can check how to do it. Basically, it, uh, it checks the amount of core that is not broken. Usually when the drillers make the hole, they make the hole for three meters length. So we will do the RQD every three meters and we just determine how many of those three meters how many centimeters are broken how many are broken how many are three, uh, very very broken and with a little formula that i sent yesterday uh, a graphic with the formula and that graphic is in the excel file that you receive for the portfolio you do the you do the estimation and you get the portion. The other thing that we do is to measure the recovery. Normally, normally, it would be great if the driller will recover the 100% of the core. This is one meter, okay? So, but that never happened. So, what you do is you take a measuring tape and you measure the length of the core and compare to the information that the drillers put. They put little uh, wooden stocks here saying, for example, this is zero to one. And yes, this is zero to one. This is one meter, 100% recovery. But this one here is one to two. When you measure this thing, it's 80 centimeters. So it's 80% recovery. So you do that, uh, that thing. Once you have done uh, this, then we go and do the quick login. For the quick login, you take the box again. And you bring it here. Now, geologists. So, you need to do a very quick logging of the core. The objective is to determine the lithological units in the rock because, because we will do the sampling within the limits of units, of geological units. Okay? Sample will be usually meter by meter, but within those units. So, as I always mention, especially in, in tropical countries like Africa, we have a good lateritic soil, usually. So the first thing you come and see in the core, you're trying to locate the, the stone line, okay? mm -hmm. or the mottled zone, okay? which is continue within the stone line. It's a place where you can see 
white, yellow, red, it's like a mix of colors, okay? That, that part is the marker. Anything above that is the limbo line. Anything below that is the supper line. Mm -hmm. And below supper. that, if it has some kind of like a putrid rock, that is a sub rock. Okay? After that, it becomes the fresh rock or bed rock. Mm -hmm. So you just, in your quick log, you start maybe marking these uh, points. Okay? The quick log will start from zero to 50. We will do this in, in detail, okay? In, in, in a separate thing. So once you have an idea of the limit, then you take you take core by core very carefully, okay? And you wanna put it here. This is our core orientation, okay? okay. So take it. And you just try to make it fit because the core never breaks like this, it breaks irregularly. Yeah. So you try to put it together, okay? So that's it for the, for the time being. Now, once you have the uh, section of the core put in there, we need to find the cut line. And this line must be perpendicular to the structures. Okay, here at the beginning, this is clay, by the way. You're gonna cut this not with a machine, you're gonna cut it with a cut glass or with a wooden knife. Okay. So this is very simple and it doesn't matter how you do it because it has no orientation. We are expecting to cut a lot of green cheese and green cheese has a lot of orientation. If we are really good and we orient the core properly, that orientation will be flat, which will be perfect, but nobody's that lucky. There will be some orientation. So what you're trying to do is to find a line that is more perpendicular to most of the rock. Okay. But if you have like a quartz vein, mm. like here, then you will try to orient, to cut that vein per perpendicular, because with the best goal will be in the quartz. Mm. So you start playing around, okay, you know, okay, here is perpendicular, okay. I already drew this line yesterday because this is the second time we do it. So we orient it. And when we are satisfied with the orientation that we have, then we rotate here to the side, okay? And then with the marker, we just, we just go and do the marking along the road, okay? And that perpendicular line in black, that is the cut line, okay? So then we put back this on the, on the core box. Careful. Okay, so now we know that is the vertical line. Okay, next we need to define the sections for the cutting, and for that, we're going to use a blue marker again. We have here a quartz vein, very good quartz vein, okay? So that will be on its own a sample. Okay? Here we have a quartz vein, but that is a very small quartz vein. Mm -hmm. So we are not taking that individually because it will not generate the necessary weight for the sample, mm -hmm. okay? So that will be part of the interval, whatever it will be. This first part, is also a, a, a lithological unit, you know, the soil. So I will sample this, so that's the blue line. Then I will measure one meter until I get to here. That will be the second time. Then I measure another meter until I get to here, third sample. Then whatever is this distance from here to here, that will be a sample. Okay. Then from here to whatever, that will be the other time. Okay, perfect. Now. Once this is done, the, the guys that carry the, car, the cord, they will take the box and they will go inside the, 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 
that place. Okay, we are not going to go because anyway the machine is not there. Mm -hmm. But that is the next step. We go, we go into the place where they do the cutting. They cut, they cut the, the cord. And that is where Tulu, Tulu? and the meta. Okay. When they, the, mach the cutting machine will be here, we're gonna have a, a, a film of this uh, later when the machine comes. But just to explain, the guys will cut the core, Tulu, you will take one half of that core and prepare your sample. And you will know, you will have here a list of which sample correspond to blanks, duplicates, and standards, so you will never forget. Okay, so you prepare the samples, you put it in a bag. We will film that tomorrow. Okay, and that's it. The other side, when it is cut, we go to the table. No, no, it's the other way around. This is the bottom. So, this is a photographic station. We need to, to glue this, you know, with scotch tape or whatever, because it's bending, okay? So, the camera, the camera needs to be at an angle of 45 degrees with the core. Once we have this done, we will mark in the floor the position of the legs. Okay, so it will be fixed and will never change. We take the picture. The picture will include a color scale. And here we need to have a plastic uh, white thing, but you can write with a, a not permanent marker, the number of the hole, the number of the box, the date, and from two. So that information will be also in the picture. And this thing here, that should be a ruler, yeah. okay? Uh, we can paint it in white and put the number, so we can just buy a one meter ruler and put it there, which is better, okay? So once that this is finished, and you see how many steps this has. This is why we need to play this like a ballet, so it will not mix. So. The next step will be the actual load. So again, you take the core, which is half now, and you put it back here. And we will go through the logging in the next video. So, so we're going now to talk about the actual loading of the core. The loading of the core is a multi-step process. And each step is each one of these little pages that I send you in the portfolio of drilling. So the first thing we do is we do a quick loading, which we already did. I mean, we didn't log it, we didn't write it, but we define the main structure. So now the first step is to write it down. So here you have a little column with a scale yeah. so you can make a graphic of what you're seeing. Yeah. Okay. So you can start and you do it of course with a pencil and a half an eraser by hand and this is what five meters? Five meters. So this will be one meter so of course we are working on this upper little part here very close to the, to the surface. So the important thing here when you have a situation like this you know that you cannot have the details. What is the most important here? You. That one thing, maybe this little one. Mm -hmm. So try to figure out where is uh, 2.7 and make a little vein and 3.2 and make a big vein. So that is what you draw in that column. But then you write in the, in the, the text, okay. you know, the normal text. So. You have okay. the limonite, the stone line, the saprolite, the sapro, green cheese with the quartz veins, etc. Now, the only thing, if you have the computer on, you have the computer here, the only thing that you need to do with your clipboard is the graphic. 
the rest type directly into the Excel field. It's one less step, one less chance to make a mistake. So, as I said, this is the first pass that you do, and you do that for the whole uh, code. Then, after that, you're gonna describe different aspects of the core, like weathering. And weathering will only be also only the first meter. Unless here, the alteration, we spend a lot of time talking about the alteration, we are talking about hydrothermal alteration. And all the steps that we did for naming the rock, it's the same thing that you're gonna be using here. You yeah. see that there's space for the links, you know, links are the apostrophes, uh, etc. So, so, as I mentioned, we have logging, the quick log we have from zero to 50, from 50 to 100, to 100, to 150, and from 150 to 200, because we don't have any holes more deeper than, than 200. If we had, we still have more of this. Okay? Then we have, the log form A, which is very simple. The from to, the lithology, the description, the color, link color, texture, cystosity, falling, and shear. Shear we have, I mean, especially in the green sheets, we will have it, a cystosity also, okay? In this case, you just make it like a, like a mark, we have it, okay? In the description, one thing, this is very important. Logging is a science and it's an art. You need to be very descriptive, very, you take your time. I mean, sometimes a geology can take an hour to get through one box to another. Take your time, nobody's gonna pressure you. But for the resource estimation, we don't need that kind of detail. For us, I mean, resource estimation doesn't matter if it is a quartz rich a diorite, or a diorite, or a, or a granite, no, the, all that is falsified. So, at some point in the lithology, this, this one here, is the simple, the simplest lithology that you can have, okay? So green cheese, amphibolite, uh, or felsic rock, we don't know, okay? That's the form A. The form B, and I should put my glasses and stop pretending that I am a young guy. <laughs> okay, now the whole from two structures, if we see a structure, alpha, what is alpha? We don't still have the goniometers. Mm. Okay, the goniometer is like two rulers, imagine two rulers, one on top of the other, yes. and one can open and close up to 90 degrees. Oh, and okay. here you have an angle. So the alpha angle is the only one that you can measure when the core is not oriented. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And the alpha is the natural surface which the core, the core will break. And if this was rock, you yeah. know, this, this thing, yeah. the, it will break like this, okay? So you just measure that angle here, which apparently there is almost, <laughs> let's say 45, 45 degrees. degrees yeah. So yeah. that is the alpha angle. So you measure the alpha angle, measure as many as you want, okay? This is very important. Feelings, if they are, if they are fractures, have feeling. Quartz or carbonate. So always have your acid with you and test it, okay? Uh, the thickness of the feeling, uh, if you see movement, I mean, if, if the core, you can see that there have been, like, there was a vein like here, and then all the vein over here, measure this movement. The surface, if it is a flat surface, and the color. And this is very important. This part here defines a project, really. The fracturation per meter. Because there is a structure on top of every uh, granite, which is called the stringer zone. The stringer zone. So it's a series of veinlets, the thermal veinlets that come from the old body into the zone. And that is usually one of the best parts for mineralization. And you define the presence of a stringer in a core, because you cannot see it in the surface, by determining how many fractures you have in the meter. Okay, sometimes you cannot count because there are plenty. Okay, so you just put more than 100. Okay, okay. 
But if there are like five, ten, if you can count per meter, you count it. Because that is, we are looking for fractures and fluid that came later into those fractures. Okay. Then, alteration. And again, use the codes that I gave you for all typical type of alteration like agilitization, advanced agilitization, propylitization, etc. Okay. So from to alteration, link, alteration, link, alteration, link, alteration. You have for four, for four uh, alteration combination per interval. Okay. So remember, if you use a, peer, a semicolon, that means something that starts with one alteration and ends with another alteration. A dash, it means that it has both at the same interval. And you can use, you can use, you should use the code, like P pervasive, V mainlet, etc., etc. Okay. You can practice, and it will be very good if you practice doing these things. Imagine yourself, okay, if I have this kind of rock, write it down so you will, have, you will know how to do the thing. Mineralization, same as the other one. You look, whatever it is mineralization, you describe. From to what time of mineralization, link, mineral, for example. To, uh, you may have oxidation by parrot, okay? okay? Or you may have parrot, calcoparrot, gold, and diamonds, <laughs> okay. Mm, okay? So you have you described all this the mineralization veins again. You have that vein or that yeah. big vein. You describe it from to what mineral okay, percentage, what mineral percentage. Because, for example, here let's say what it would be 90 percent quartz, but you have five percent pirate and two percent calcopirate and three percent bornite. You may have that thing, okay? So you put the mineral at the percentage. We don't have, uh, the, for the geophysical measurement, we don't have it, but you, uh, we will order a capometer. Okay. And the capometer is very easy to use. You just press it and it gives you the magnetic resistivity of the, of the thing. A capometer, you will have a radiometer or a spectrometer to measure the amount of uranium, thorium, potassium, and the total amount. Another thing that you have and you have in your pocket is your phone. It has a, not a capometer, but a, a sensor. It has a magnetic sensor, okay? So you can test with your magnetic sensor. It's not top of the line, but it's an additional it's information handy. that you can have, okay? So those are for your physical measurements. Then these are the results from the lab. When we get the result, we just write it there. And this is, of course, this is not in the proper order. The proper order is that one in the okay. So you will do, one of you will do audits of the driller because we need to get on the driller step foot all the time. Because if not, they will start doing that one. So you, these are the, the, the points that you need to check when you do and how you do the lab. Yes, no, yes, no, observation, and you discuss the result with the drill. Because they, they are not the end, and we are not the end. Okay, but they need to know that they are doing a good job or bad job. This here is the legend of everything that we are going to be using here. So let me start again by the beginning, which I should have started here. As I mentioned, this is the portfolio, and every hole will have one. You have here the, the number of the whole orientation, the project, who log, who did the logging, when it started, when it finished, uh, what are the plan, planet coordinates, what are the survey coordinates, because as I mentioned, I gave you a list of the coordinates. But when we got into the field, we saw that where yeah, I wanted is not exactly, best. that it's best to go 10 meters that way. Mm -hmm. You do it, but you then write it here. And every time you finish one of these pages, you just mark it, okay? So the first one, which we actually pick this one here, is a drilling request, because we need to define why we want every hole. What are the objectives that we are looking for with that hole, okay? So we plan, we give it to the boss to sign, we write what is the objective, and we make a little design of what we expect to find in that hole. This you need to give to the drillers. 
okay, before we start. Sometimes we don't have no information, we don't give nothing. But for example, we are doing a lot of double holes at 45 and at 60 degrees. So when we have the geology of the 45, very easy to assume what will be the geology of the 60 degrees. So we make the plan and we give it to them. Most important for them, for the drillers, is to know where is the water table and where are the potential faults or contacts between different rocks. And again, spectrum, expected major intersection, in this case, is the water table with expected that track leads. The next page after this is the photographic record. And we take from each hole, we take four pictures. Before the drilling, during the drilling, after the drilling, and the recovery of the platform. Because sometimes the drill left a mess behind. We cannot allow that. They need to let the thing clean up. And what else? Uh, this is the weight of the boxes. I explained why it's so yeah, important yes, to yeah. have the weight, the core type by boxes, because uh, we are going to be drilling two uh, size, HQ and NQ. NQ is HQ for the beginning, it's thicker, and then it goes to NQ, which is faster. Then the sample control, this is Tolu. Okay, all your samples that you know, you're going to have, you know, this is a duplicate, this is a regular sample, this is where you write it down. And then the uh, RQD, which I mentioned to you, yes, and, yeah. and that's it. The rest we already... So, there are many ways to do the density determination. The best form, or the best way, is to have a scale that you can hold in your hand, or, you know, like a nail hole here, and then it should have some kind of a disc okay, where you put the sample. So you take the weight, and then you put that into a bucket of water, and you measure the weight under the water. So it will be less because it will flow the density. So density will be the weight in the air divided by the weight in the water. Very simple. What is the problem with that? is that if the rock is porous, okay, then previously to doing that, you need to submerge the piece of rock in paraffin wax. Because wax has the same density as water. So it will not affect the density of the rock. You wax the whole thing, so it will not be porous, and then you do the same. Okay, so that is the easiest way and the best way. Now, for that we will need, as I said, a a scale that you can put in the air and put it inside the water and most important the disc where you're going to put the rock and then put it inside the water for now that we don't have that scale and this is where your, your geometry will come to work when you ask these people to stop yelling so this is where geometry comes to work and you all asked when you were a student, why in the hell I need to learn geometry? I will never use it. Here you're gonna use it. Let's assume we don't have a, a hanging scale, okay? But if you get a piece of core, you can determine the volume of this piece of core very easily by geometry. The diameter by P, so, sorry, P by two times the radius by the length, that will give you the volume of the of this piece of rock. And then you just wait. Wait by volume, you have your test. No problem with porosity, no problem with nothing. So, with the red marker, remember we have the black for the center line, the blue for the intersection of electrology. With the red marker, you will mark approximately this, like, this, like 10 centimeters okay, of the core. And when the, the guy that is working at the port shop will see that red line, he will cut it for us. Okay? And then, you, how many times? As many times as, as you want, because as many density is good. But most important, every type of lithology must have its density. At least one. So for example, in this box, we will have one for the quartz and one for the green sheets. We will avoid this part here because that is a mix, okay? So in this box, we will have two rock for density. 
Again, the formula, I just sent you this morning uh, an updated version of the portfolio because I added the recovery and the density, which were not there the first time. So remember the formula, P, 3.14, multiplied by, by the radius, which is the diameter by two, squared by the length. That gives you, in centimeters, that gives you the volume in cubic centimeters, and then you go weigh the rock, gram per cubic centimeters, that. No, any questions? It's in the paper. P, which is 3.14, multiplied by the radius square, and the radius is the diameter divided by two, multiplied by the length of the, of the cone. So again, that's the radius. Half, half the diameter is the radius, so it's P, 3.14, multiplied by radius squared by the length. Perfect. 3.14. Now, who's going to be doing that? Tolu! Okay? Tolu will be doing the density because the geology will be busy doing their logging. Okay? So you know how to do it. You can, and if by any chance you do one of these measurements, and you see a very high value, you send the job. There is something here, or a very low value. Any extremes are good qualified.